Moving on to problem three. I need you guys to be able to understand when you see a problem, you should know if it moves up and you should know if it moves down. So let's say that you have y equals the square root of x plus, I don't, let's just say k, okay? That means that it would move up or down k units, okay? Depending if k was positive or negative. So if I had like y equals the square root of x plus three, that means it would move up three units. On the other hand, if I had y equals the square root of x minus 3, that would tell me that it moves down 3 units. Let's try applying this. In problem 3, of course, it's nice and small, so you can barely read it. y equals the square root of x plus 2. We should know that that's going to move our normal graph. And when I say the normal graph, see this graph right here? This graph is just going to be up 2 units. But we're going to make an xy chart. Now if you listened really well in the first video, you should know that this side, I want you to pick perfect squares. So let's pick some perfect squares, 0, 1, 4, 9. Now we can plug them in to this equation. So the square root of 0 plus 2, the square root of 1 plus 2, the square root of 4 plus 2, and the square root of 9 plus 2. Well, the square root of 0 is 0, plus 2 is 2. The square root of 1 is 1, plus 2 is 3. The square root of 4 is 2, plus 2 is 4. The square root of 9 is 3, plus 2 is 5. Let's take our points and plot them on our graph. 0, 2, over 1, up 3, over 4, up 4, over 9, up 5, and look how the graph is that parabolic shape that we've always seen, um, that's because, by the way guys, these are the inverse, you'll learn a lot more about those later, it's the inverse of a quadratic. Take a look at your graph versus the original, see if I can get them both in the, kind of on the same screen. Can you see how this one's been moved up two units from the origin? That's because of that plus 2 in the back. Let's try the next one. What is the graph of negative, or the square root of x minus 3? You should understand that's going to move down 3. So I'm going to get my xy chart so I know my points. I'm going to pick perfect squares because these make the pretty ones. <clears throat> I'm going to plug them in. Square root of 0 minus 3, square root of 1 minus 3, square root of 4 minus 3, square root of 9 minus 3. Square root of 0 is 0, minus 3 is negative 3. Square root of 1 is 1, minus 3 is negative 2. Square root of 4 is 2, minus 3 is negative 1. Square root of 9 is 3, minus 3 is 0. Let's plot our new points. 0, negative 3. 1, negative 2. 4, negative 1. And 9, 0. Take a look at how this graph from the parent function has just moved down three units from the origin. It still has this almost half of a parabolic shape. And there you go. We got our square roots moving up and down. On the next two examples, we're going to move them left and right. Now, how do you know if something moves left or right? Well, you're going to have y equals the square root of x plus h. Excuse me what we usually say is x minus h. Now you see h, h is either going to move it to the left or it's going to move it to the right. And here is your hint. It's opposite of what you want to say. Opposite of what you think. Notice now it's inside the square root. Inside square root. That's what moves it left and right. So if I have y equals the square root of x minus 3, your natural instinct might be, well, it's negative. It moves to the left. But really, guys, this moves to the right three units. And my best example to make you understand this is it's almost like asking you, what would you have to do to get back to the original? The original would be plus 3, which helps me to think about it. Um, so if you have to add 3, that means it's because you moved to the right I don't know if that helps, but sometimes if you just remember it's backwards of what you think, that will be helpful. 
Now this one, x plus 3, that one's going to move it to the left. Just remember, left and right are opposite of what you think. I promise you, you are going to use this so much in Algebra 2. If you learn it now, it's going to be so beneficial next year. So we have our new equation, y equals the square root of x plus 3. Now here's the trick. Our old chart would be 0, 1, 4, and 9, right? But because you are moving it left and right, the x values are changing. This one is being moved to the left three units. Because it is being moved to the left three units, you see these values? I need you to move these to the left three. So when I make my new xy chart, zero moved to the left three is negative three. One moved to the left three is negative two. Four moved to the left three is one. Nine moved to the left three is six. I promise you'll see in our y's why that's really important. So we keep the square root we plug in x and we add 3. So this particular um, xy chart, you're going to do negative 3 plus 3, which is 0, and the square root of 0 is 0. Can you see how just by adjusting it, I'm keeping my y values nice and pretty? This one's going to be the square root of negative 2 plus 3, which is really the square root of 1, which is 1. This is going to be the square root of 1 plus 3. The square root of 1 plus 3 is really the square root of 4, which is 2. Again, if I didn't change these x's, these y's would be all kinds of messed up. The next one, the square root of 6 plus 3, gives me to the square root of 9, which lets me be a 3. Plot your points. Negative 3, 0 negative 2, 1, 1, 2, 6, 3. Draw the arc that connects them. Make it a parabolic type of shape. Okay, almost half of a U. And can you see how from the original, okay, the parent function that we had, it started at 0, 0. What did our problem do? It took this graph and it moved it to the right, or excuse me, to the left, three units. There it is, to the left, three units. All right, let's try this one. This one is going to be moving to the right, three units. So... If I used to pick, ready? Now, when you move it left, make a note down here. When moving left or right, adjust your X's on the chart. When moving left and right, adjust your X's on the chart. This problem, used, we used to want to graph using these numbers, right? These are the original numbers, the original x's. So now they are being moved to the right three units. So when I make my new xy chart, zero moved to the right is positive three. One moved to the right is positive four. 4 moved to the right is positive 7. 9 moved to the right is positive 12. That's really going to help our y side of the chart. This will be the square root of 3 minus 3. This will be the square root of 4 minus 3. This will be the square root of 7 minus 3. And this will be the square root of 12 minus 3. And I changed my x's. Now watch what happens with the y's. This is the square root of 0, which is 0. 
This is the square root of 1, which is 1. This is the square root of 4, which is 2. This is the square root of 9, which is 3. Plot your points. You go over 3, up to 0. Over 4, up 1. Over 7, up 2. And over 12, you're going to have to add a little bit here. I know I only think I went to 10. Check it out. 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 11, 12. Go over to where 12 would be and head up 3 units. So right around here. I know I didn't give you quite enough room on this chart. You can see how this square root really just moved to the right three places from the origin. You should also understand that we can combine left and right up and down. If you have more than one thing being added or subtracted, chances are it is going to move up and down, left and right. Just remember, if it's inside the radical, that means it moves left and right. If it's outside of the radical, that means it moves up and down. Also, in today's notes, you learn to remember to use things you've already learned, like how to solve for a variable inside a square root. Other than that, come in with good questions tomorrow, and I will see you soon.